Hello everyone and welcome back to the new edition of Around the World in 80 Planes, this time in X-Plane 11, where I'm going to fly the Fly J-Sim 727 from Belém in Brazil to Fortaleza in Brazil for a total trip distance of 614 nautical miles. Uh, the plane is in a Pan Am livery here, as you can see. Very nice. This is, of course, a payware plane and one of my favorites, in fact. Uh, taking a look at the cockpit, we've got all the nice features and even the engineer panel. Granted, uh, the circuit breakers in the back do not work, that's just a sort of image, but there are other features in the back that do work and actually you need to use the APU behind that right there. Uh, so yeah, we, it's a functional engineer panel, functional everything, and it's even got some uh, side stuff over here that I like, especially this uh, calculation it does for takeoff and landing with the velocities and the weight and balance thing here and it's got a uh, field of view options and the sound options here too and yokes and all this stuff as well call outs enabled and also maintenance system right now I have it off and that's because I just updated it um, Let's turn it on. Why not? Failure system has been turned on. Take your seats now. Very ominous. Anyway, so, okay, maintenance system is on. We even got a little pad there. But all right, we are going to make this flight. And of course, since it's high altitude, I don't expect that the scenery in X-Plane 11 is going to be too bothersome. Uh, we are going to be flying beyond 30,000 feet. And we are continuing to listen to the Apollo 14 audio, picking up roughly from where we left off. I don't think I put the marker quite where it ought to have been. But they did have a docking issue between the command module and the lunar module uh, two uh, videos back. And so they're still going to be talking about that because they're going to have to undock those and redock them again around the moon. So they definitely want to make sure they figure out what's going on there. So, continuing to listen to that. Once, there we go. And beginning the flight. Yeah, that uh, sounds alright, Stu. Okay. I've got a sound, I hope, goes off. I think maybe it's the brakes. And, uh, 14 Houston. Go ahead. I don't recall hearing that sound in this plane before, so that might be the newest update. <laughs> um, we'll see. Let me focus on taking off first. Okay. Well, maybe it was the flaps. I don't know. I feel like I'm a little bit low in the seat. So, Bellum in X-Plane 11, we did not see it in X-Plane 11 last time. Okay, uh, I do have okay. downloaded photo scenery for this. Not perfect, but not horrible. I do think it was the flaps uh, it was expecting Go ahead. that caused the warning. Okay, if uh, you can give us uh, accept there, uh, we'll pump you up a uh, state vector, and I have P-37 uh, uh, block data for you. Uh, 
Low pressure on the fuel system. I think that sorts itself out at high al higher altitude, if I recall. And the pressurization pressurization system is in the back here. I think it's set up fine. Well, we'll find out in a hurry if it isn't. Okay, at uh, P-37 block data, 02501 minus 1650691209012 Taking a look at the fuel okay. flow and everything. Okay. Um, the next one. Zero, three, got fuel five, flow zero, here, zero. but Seven, five, four, I don't know eight, if the quantity minus, is one, displayed six, five, anywhere except for the pads. Of course, zero, I can always check six, the eight, three, data five, over in the left-hand thingamajigs. Zero, four, five, zero, zero. Five, seven, oh, two, it five, might, five, might be on the engineer panel, of course. Minus, one six five zero nine two five eight. Oh, right there, of course. Zero six zero 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 five two four two. Seems good to me. Five one one seven zero two. It's only an hour long flight. I or a little bit over an hour. Not expecting anything horrible. So they've read up a whole bunch of maneuvers that noted that depends on the second mid-course adjustment.
at that pyro cover that uh, Bruce had asked me about before. And, uh, boy, I, I can't see anything wrong with the probe anywhere. Okay. Another comment by Stu Russo on the continuing mystery of why the docking probe uh, malfunctioned in the earlier attempts right after translunar injection to dock with the lunar module. Attempts to duplicate this failure uh, in flight as well as uh, here on the ground have been fruitless so far. The training model of the probe and drogue are sitting on the floor in the aisle next to the spacecraft communicators console here in mission control. Meanwhile, uh, the tests in flight have been postponed or suspended until after the rest and uh, meal period for the crew of Apollo 14. The spacecraft is now 63,937 nautical miles out from Earth at a velocity of 7,100 feet per second. Nope, yep. those lights are still on. to monitor air ground here in mission control uh, as the crew prepares for the night's nope. rest. And just as I say that, one set turns set off. On the slow rotation of passive thermal control, BTC. I think it's because our fuel flow is decreasing As we go up. 13 hours, 22 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo control. Houston. Fairly clear day today. It looks like uh, you quit moving around in there, Ed. The rates are down. I guess you will crank up uh, PTC. Okay. I'll be, be right with you. Chris. No hurry. Yeah, it's important that they the ship isn't like jostling a whole lot when they start up the roll uh, for okay. passive thermal control. Otherwise, the roll gets wobbly. Uh -huh. Uh, just a reminder, uh, you might make sure you've uh, brushed your teeth and all that kind of stuff before uh, tucking her in there before you crank up that PTC. Even brushing your teeth can knock things uh, off. Houston 14. Uh, go ahead, 14. Okay, Fred, I'm going to spin it up. I'm going to use the uh, BD roll, uh, if that's uh, agreeable with you. Okay. That'll be fine. Okay. Some baked in clouds okay, down there. Go ahead. Oops. Hey, Fred, I guess we've. Uh already said everything we can to try to help uh, y'all out on that probe. Uh, we're sitting here trying to run back over. I want to make sure that we're not overlooking something that might give you a clue. And uh, when we did our docking, as, uh, as I was thrusting uh, plus X and then Al hit the retract, he said the uh, talkback came back barber pole for uh, that's a, a time period, you know, like a couple of seconds uh, before, uh, and then went gray again when we got the, uh, the dock. Now, I just tossed that in. I think we called that, but I just wanted to make sure we'd covered everything. Okay, uh, we, we had already uh, gotten that uh, spear uh, from your previous comments. Okay, I just thought maybe they're in the rush of things, uh, you know, we might not got it in. I can't think of anything else to uh, add, I guess. Okay, uh, sir, I guess we got nothing else on the drug uh, business. Uh, just wanted to verify that you uh, get the LIOH uh, canister changed and your uh, PTC startup looks good. That's the carbon dioxide extraction canister. Okay, Okay, 
broken. Always good to get those changed before they sleep, I suppose. This is Apollo Control. 13 hours, 50 minutes, ground elapsed time. And that last exchange... It seemed to be trimmed up quite a lot on takeoff. I did not intend for it to be. We're still within the takeoff range. One item that perhaps he did not mention during the earlier discussions of the docking probe problem. It turned out he had mentioned them, but it uh, had to do with the indications of some devices in the cabin called talkbacks. They're little striped uh, devices that show striped. the window, and when they're still, they have stripes, and when they're spinning, they turn gray because of the visual effect of black and white stripes moving at high speed. However, he had mentioned this, uh, these indicators uh, earlier in the evening. He reported also that at uh, 13 hours and 7 minutes ground elapsed time, they had changed the lithium hydroxide canister in the command module. These canisters serve to uh, scrub the carbon dioxide from the cabin atmosphere. Just checking the pressurization. Seems all right. The cabin altitude is just 4,000. Earlier this morning, the flight director, uh, Jerry Griffin, was down fiddling with the probe and drogue mechanism sitting on the floor here in mission control. And all the Scratching low pressure lights are off. And uh, at this time, or perhaps later in the day, uh, various locations around the country where the probe and drogue, and drogue is, had been designed and manufactured, uh, other people will be scratching their heads. <laughs> Lots of head scratching. Why the uh, drogue did not latch on the first several attempts at docking in Apollo 14. Flight plan calls for the crew to uh, go to sleep at about 16 hours ground elapsed time, which is about two hours and eight minutes from now. And there's an outside chance that they may decide to uh, move that up a bit. At the present time, they're uh, getting set up in passive thermal control, PTC. Status reports coming out of the spacecraft analysis room are uh, rather uh, brief. All the systems perking along quite nominally. Perking? It shows the, uh, at 11 hours and 7 minutes, uh, the leak rate uh, in the lunar module and command module tunnel joint was about five tenths or five one hundredths of a pound per hour of oxygen or atmosphere. Guidance and control uh, all up to stuff. Communications are normal. Displays and controls all nominal. Down through all the rest of the spacecraft systems. Uh, there's a slight uh, drop below what uh, is nominal at this time in the flight for the command module, there's command and service module, reaction control system propellants. In uh, propellant remaining, uh, in as much as quite a bit was used in the several docking attempts. It's still well within the uh, an acceptable budget. Electrical system, uh, battery B still charging in the command module. All other batteries are topped off. Uh, about 107.47 amp hours remaining in uh, batteries A, B, and C. Fuel cells and cryogenic storage tanks all operating normally at this time. No problems, according to the notation by the spacecraft analysis room who generates these reports uh, of 
about every two hours. Apollo 14 now weighing, uh, according to the Space Digital's display, uh, 98,110 pounds. Altitude above the Earth, or out from the Earth, 66,183 nautical miles. Velocity, 6,943 feet per second. And at 13 hours, 55 minutes, round elapsed time, this is Apollo Control with an open circuit, and Apollo 14, air-to-ground communications. We're just going along the coast of Brazil here, the north coast of Brazil. Just a reminder that I've cut out the silences, so there's a lot more and, gap between uh, these clips Houston, than uh, might seem. We're not really sure uh, what caused the uh, PTC to diverge. It uh, looked like a pretty good uh, start, uh, unless uh, either vented something or maybe something continued uh, to vent from a while back. That's more likely. Uh, we had a continuing vent. Okay. The trouble with uh, communication problem. Okay, there's Omni, Omni Charlie. How's that? Okay, how do you read me now? Okay, you're loud and clear. Roger, uh, we were having some uh, data dropouts on high bed right there, uh, Stu, and we, uh, before we get ready to crank up uh, PTC, uh, we'll have you go back to Bravo then. Okay. Houston. Okay, we're showing uh, O2 flow pegged high down here. Uh, just wondered if you're getting that on board too. 
Unexpected venting doesn't sound great. Okay, yeah. Uh, what side of the spacecraft, uh, 14? That's coming out the port side. Okay, the port side. Mm -hmm. Well, we're at our target altitude here. 14, Just need to sort of level out. Oop, and really level okay, out. Yeah, I'm navigating by an external map, so uh, yeah, if you're wondering, okay, um, that's might, uh, that's going on too. Again, oh, maybe that's on, a little. Uh, the, yes, uh, it's just blinking because I'm at my sure uh, target out out. Uh, altitude. Uh, yeah, we're rechecking. Or I was. <laughs> yeah, Fred, I did that. In fact, I even closed the. Uh, Lost a bit the, there. Uh, waste management dump. Uh, just see if uh, Myrtle was leaking, but. Uh, Okay. Uh, 14, Houston. That it lost out to you pretty darn fast. Okay, Whoops. Uh, seeing any more uh, vending overboard at this time? And it's trying to gain it really fast too. Uh, Fred, I'm just sitting here watching it. Uh, just, uh, it, it comes in spurts, uh, just about 30 seconds ago we got a nice flash and there's some right now. Oh, now it's going down again. Looks like it's coming, you know, from over in the area of the... the I'm not using uh, autopilot uh, deliberately, so... Right. All 80 flights will be done manually. Okay. Tide settled down 
on our meter at uh, point six pounds an hour now. Yes, on. yes, I know altitude. Okay. I wonder if I turn this off. Nope, it doesn't make a difference. Because that's okay, just an autopilot thing. Nope, it's sh rattling a little bit. That turbulence, or we're not at the red line or anything. I should mention I have XP realistic in here and so that has all sorts of effects like airframe wind and turbulence shakings and stuff like that so it could be doing stuff related to that. We are at our intended altitude. Houston, we're bringing direct O2 valve on to the cabin up to 5 7 now. Okay. I think there's a map on this thing. And 14, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. We can zoom out a little bit. Oh, we're configured down here to uh, take the memory dump any time. Uh, well, one. you can see Bellum and uh, Sao Luis there. Fortaleza, maybe you can zoom out to see Fortaleza. Okay, Fred, uh, we almost, yeah, we've got there. Oh, uh, we went too far. Okay, Okay, we're ready uh, now, Stu, for the e-memory. Uh, they're all set. Okay. Oh, darn it. Houston, onboard readout. Copy that. Okay, uh, Fred, here comes the verb 74. Okay. Feel like maybe whatever effect is going on okay. might be for a different plane. <laughs> maybe there shouldn't be so much shaking for this plane at this speed. Unless it's actually uh, maybe it is actually turbulence, seeing how we bob we are bobbing. Uh -oh. readouts of uh, consumables 
battery uh, amp hours remaining, uh, percentages of RCS propellants. Right now, Apollo 14, uh, as shown on the space digital display, is being 71,887 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now 6,570 feet per second. We'll leave the air ground circuit up uh, for a while longer until uh, it appears that the crew has settled down uh, for their sleep period. At 15 hours, 24 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Yeah, we're bobbing a bit. There's turbulence. And wing flex. I don't know, I, I don't seem to get a whole lot of turbulence turbulence in flight scene. I know they're wind gusts and all, but it doesn't seem to feel the same way. Houston, you're at 14. 14, Houston, you're at last clear. Hello, Houston, how do you read 14? 14, uh, Houston, how do you read me? Oh, you're loud and clear. There was a lot of static and uh, no reception on, I guess, that other uh, antenna. Okay, uh, we had to drop uh, Madrid and try to reacquire there to get you back. Uh, let's verify that you are on Omni uh, Bravo there, uh, Stu. That's affirmative, Omni Bravo. Okay. And uh, if you don't have anything else for us, uh, we're about to secure here. Secure meaning sleep. <laughs> uh, 14 Houston. Well, we're basically balanced. Uh, just one more thing uh, I'd like to confirm uh, the H2 uh, fans off. Lots of rattling, though. Okay, well, they were on. Uh, they're off now, uh, Fred. All right, just do. I guess you can take the uh, rest yep. of the day Yep, vertical off. speed seems nice. Okay. Trimmed well enough for me. This is Apollo Control at 15 hours, 47 minutes around the lapse time. And apparently the crew of Apollo 14 has retired for the night. That last conversation between Stu Rusa and spacecraft communicator Fred Hayes here in Mission Control. Flight surgeon on the gold team, Dr. Willard Hawkins, said he couldn't really tell yet from his biomedical data at his console who was asleep yet. He said it appears that uh, spacecraft commander Shepard is now Nearing sleep status, but uh, he couldn't really Sleep tell. status. We'll uh, take down the air to ground circuit, and if there are any further conversations after the sleep period, which has now begun, uh, we'll play those back on a delayed basis from tapes. Present position of the spacecraft. 73,420 nautical miles out, velocity 6,476 feet per second, 
And at 15 hours, 48 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Minutes, ground elapsed time. Even though the crew nope. had... We seem to uh, miss something or another. ...for the night, they uh, came back with a short exchange of somewhat less than a minute with spacecraft communicator... Red Hayes here in Mission Control. Uh, we'll play the tape back now. Okay, uh, three is auto and uh, one in two, uh, O2 two tanks are off. Okay, we'll leave you alone now. Sure, you okay. will. Will they really? Oops. This is Apollo Control. That wraps up the short piece of tape that was accumulated after the crew supposedly had sacked out the night. Apollo 14 now 74,589 nautical miles out. Velocity 6,406 feet per second. And at 16 hours, 7 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 16 hours, 57 minutes ground elapsed time. Crew has been asleep now, or at least uh, haven't heard from them in about the last hour. scheduled 10 hour sleep period which may run a little bit longer since they did go to bed earlier. Apollo 14 now uh, 77,595 nautical miles out from Earth traveling at a velocity of 6,231 feet per second. The latest uh, status report from the spacecraft analysis room in the back of the building here for our ground elapsed time of 16 hours. It uh, appears as the earlier report uh, came out, all systems normal, no change in status. One uh, brief mention of the fluctuation in oxygen flow rates which occurred shortly before the crew went to sleep where some of the waste management valves apparently had to be recycled to uh, return the oxygen flow rate to its normal uh, rate of something around three-tenths of a pound per hour. Battery B in the command module was taken off charge at about uh, 13 and a half hours ground elapsed time. All batteries are topped off now, rated value. Fuel, uh, fuel cells in the service module. Uh, yep, we've gone a little bit too uh, far to the left here. I'm putting 24 amps, uh, as is number two. Still 33,000 feet, no amps. problems. storage system, hydrogen and oxygen in the uh, service module, all showing nominal values of... Uh, oh, I totally forgot about the seatbelt sign and all. Well, they should probably fasten their seatbelts and definitely don't smoke. The percentage of quantity, uh, oxygen tank number one is 92.6% remaining. Oxygen tank number two, 93%. Oxygen tank number three, fifty-seven percent. Number three is the tank that was added after the Apollo 13 incident, and of course the plan is to uh, use from it first, and then go to the other two tanks. Hydrogen tank number one has ninety point nine eight percent quantity remaining. Hydrogen tank number two. 89.11 percent. At 17 hours, 
Ground elapsed time. In the mission of Apollo 14, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 17 hours, 57 minutes, ground elapsed time. It's been uh, slightly more than two hours since we last heard from the crew of Apollo 14 in the midst of a sleep period, well deserved. Apollo 14, uh, presently 81,112 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 6,038 feet per second. It's rather quiet here in mission control. It's, uh, the gold team near, nears the end of its first shift in this mission. At uh, 17 hours 57 minutes, Around the lapse time, this is Apollo Control. So to our right is Sao Luis. Seems like a fairly big city. This is Apollo Control, 18 hours, 8 minutes, around the lapse time. An announcement of local interest here. One million population? Spacecraft Center, or Can't really see it that Apollo well, 14. but it's on the that peninsula on the there. Space Shuttle program which had been scheduled for 9.30 Monday morning, that's today, has been slipped until 1.30 p.m. in the small briefing room in the news center. The uh, major participant in this briefing will be Charles W. Matthews, Deputy Associate Administrator, Office of Manned Space Flight, NASA Headquarters. To repeat, this briefing has been rescheduled to 1.30 p.m. today in the small briefing room, not at 9.30 as previously announced. Apollo 14, meanwhile, now 81,826 nautical miles out from Earth, going at an even 6,000 feet per second. At 18 hours, 9 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 18 hours, 37 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 14 crew still asleep at this time. The clock on the front screen of Mission Control here showing an awake time, uh, 7 hours, 22 minutes from now. Some velocity and distance figures. Uh, distance out from Earth, 83,399 nautical miles. Velocity 5,917 feet per second. To recap the past uh, seven or seven and a half hours of the gold team uh, tenure here in mission control, the, uh, shortly after the shift of flight controllers under flight director Jerry Griffin came in, the uh, crew was given a. There's a deserty sort of area up there, or maybe it's just sandy. Maybe just a really big beach. Stabilizing the thermal response of the spacecraft. I wrote it says it's a national park. Axis. So this uh, took a little while to set up, and they had to make two attempts of it. Rusa asked uh, if it wouldn't be all right to stow the probe, which had been under examination in the spacecraft, back in the tunnel uh, attached to the. Drove. Everyone agreed that was the ideal place to store it rather than have it rattling around in the cabin. All attempts on board the spacecraft uh, and here in mission control with a training model of the probe and drove to duplicate the malfunction of the latches failing to engage, uh, all of these attempts failed because it worked every time. <laughs> it worked every time, at least on the model. Oh, it's only panned to the left there. Uh, go to sleep earlier than call for in the flight And plan. it's back to the right again. And they started their sleep period at about 15 hours, 30 minutes, around elapsed time, with a brief uh, exchange.
exchange a conversation between Stu Rusa and spacecraft communicator Fred Hayes about 15 minutes after. Uh, prior to going asleep, to sleep, uh, there was a brief flurry of high flow rates in the oxygen system in the spacecraft environmental control system. It was discovered that uh, it was caused perhaps by uh, valves in the waste management system leading the pressure overboard and causing higher, flight and, uh, higher flow rate in the oxygen system. But this was corrected without uh, too much difficulty. Passive thermal control was set up. The crew made their consumables report of uh, propellants remaining, amp hours in the batteries, all the usual standard stuff called for in the flight plan prior to sleep. And that uh, they did begin their sleep period at ground elapsed time of 15 hours, 30 minutes. And at 18 hours, 40 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo control. This is Apollo Control Houston at 19 hours uh, 31 minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays and mission control uh, presently show uh, Apollo 14 at a distance of 86,406 nautical miles away from Earth, and uh, now traveling at a speed of uh, 5,765 uh, feet per second. In the uh, mission control center, uh, we're in the process of a uh, shift changeover. The uh, Pete Frank team of Orange uh, Flight Controllers uh, replacing uh, Jerry Griffin, uh, Jerry Griffin's gold team. As has been previously reported, uh, the Apollo 14 crew is uh, in a rest period. Uh, we now show a wake-up time six hours and uh, 28 minutes away. In the, uh, uh, over the... Uh, newsroom uh, television monitors at uh, 1135 uh, Central Time, uh, there will be a replay of the uh, television transmission uh, that occurred at uh, 11 hours, uh, 6 minutes uh, ground elapsed time. Uh, this transmission uh, ran uh, 1 hour and 5 minutes. Uh, we repeat, uh, in the uh, over the uh, news center uh, television monitors, uh, there will be a uh, reshowing of the uh, television transmission that occurred at 11.06 of ground elapsed time and ran for an hour and a half. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Or uh, an hour and five minutes. Uh, this will uh, be at 11.35 uh, uh, Central Time. Dunes, I We're guess? We're at uh, 19 hours uh, 33 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Well, that's a national park for you. Uh, interesting landscape. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 20 hours uh, 32 minutes uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays uh, now show Let's Apollo 14 at a level distance here? of 89,728 so. nautical miles uh, away from Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5600 and 3.7 feet per second. It passed halfway. The uh, surgeon reports that the three crew members, <coughs> Shepard, uh, Rusa, Mitchell, are s sleeping quite soundly. We show. Uh, Took us a little bit longer to get to altitude than I expected, so. Minutes. Maybe and should have uh, this time, uh, accelerated we'll a little bit more at lower altitude. To, uh, replay the uh, television transmission of early this mo uh, of early this morning, and uh, this will be available on the monitors in the news center. We're at uh, 20 hours, uh, 33 minutes, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Plenty of fuel. This is Apollo Control Houston at 21 hours, uh, 41 minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. We presently show the uh, 14 spacecraft at uh, a distance of 93,355 nautical miles and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,435 uh, feet per second. 
As the uh, rest period for the crew continues, the uh, flight control team here in mission control. It's a lot of rattling. Let me see if I can. Maybe it's XP realistic and I can turn that off. Are updating the flight plan, both for the balance uh, of our shift and uh, the next shift. Ah, uh, that's okay. We can deal with that much. The uh, crew yep. wake up definitely it was XP realistic. Shows, uh, that it's four hours uh, eighteen minutes away. We're at uh, 21 hours, uh, 42 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 22 hours, uh, 12 minutes, and uh, now into the flight. We now show Apollo 14 at a distance of uh, 94,979 nautical miles away from Earth, and at a traveling at a speed of uh, 5,362 feet per second. Uh, during this uh, quiet period, uh, while the crew is resting, a uh, replay of last night's uh, docking is being rerun on one of the, or on the screen here at Mission Control. A uh, space shuttle news conference uh, featuring... Space shuttle news Charles conference. Matthews ...is scheduled to be held in the uh, news center briefing room at 1.30 p.m about uh, 15 minutes uh, from this time. We're at uh, 22 hours, uh, 13 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 23 hours, uh, 23 minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Our displays presently show Apollo 14 at a distance of 98,566 nautical miles out from Earth and uh, traveling at a velocity of uh, 5,205 feet per second. The crew of Apollo 14 is uh, continuing uh, with their rest period. However, um, our flight surgeon advises that the uh, lunar module pilot, uh, Ed Mitchell, uh, plugged in his uh, biomed, biomed at uh, 22 hours and uh, 50 minutes. Uh, this would assume about uh, seven hours of sleep time. Meanwhile, uh, we have preliminary times, distances, and velocities of certain uh, milestone events uh, en route to the moon. Uh, these are uh, preliminary times distances and velocities. The uh, halfway in distance in terms of time, that would be at a ground elapsed time of uh, 27 hours, uh, 4 minutes, uh, 42 seconds. The uh, altitude uh, would be uh, 109,172 nautical miles. The velocity uh, relative to Earth, uh, 4,779 feet per second. Velocity uh, relative uh, to the moon, uh, 3,694 feet per second. Uh, halfway in terms of time, uh, this uh, from liftoff to uh, lunar orbit insertion. The uh, time uh, would be uh, 40 hours, uh, 56 minutes. The uh, altitude uh, relative uh, to the Earth, uh, 142,119 uh, nautical miles. The altitude uh, relative to the moon, uh, 81,723 nautical miles. Uh, velocity uh, uh, relative uh, to the Earth, uh, 3,601 feet per second. The velocity relative to the moon, uh, uh, 3,261.7 feet per second. A sphere crossing time uh, when we cross from the Earth to the uh, lunar sphere of influence. Uh, 66 hours, uh, 3 minutes, uh, 7 seconds. The uh, velocity match when uh, the velocity of the moon uh, equals uh, the velocity of the Earth at the ground elapsed time of uh, 47 hours, uh, 43 minutes. Uh, the velocity reading uh, at that time, uh, 3,214 uh, feet per second. Uh, with regard to the uh, S4B, uh, 
the uh, present uh, forecast time of impact uh, 82 hours 37 minutes uh, 10 seconds the uh, velocity at impact uh, 8347 uh, feet per second present uh, predicted coordinates uh, 9 degrees uh, 2409 minutes south uh, 25 degrees uh, 600 west. Uh, we uh, also would like to advise uh, all newsmen that there will be a uh, briefing, a uh, news conference on Apollo 14 mission status in the uh, big art auditorium uh, at 3 o'clock. Uh, participants include uh, Rocco Patron, Apollo uh, Program Director, Chet Lee, Apollo 14 Mission Director, uh, Jim uh, McDivitt, Apollo uh, Spacecraft Program Manager in Houston, and uh, Sig Schulberg. Uh, There's apparently a city of, uh, called Itapipoca. At the Manned Spacecraft Center. We repeat the Apollo 14. Uh, Sounds like it should be the source of uh, tapioca or something. Uh, three o'clock in the uh, big auditorium of uh, building one. We're at uh, 23 hours, uh, 28 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 23 hours, 42 minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 14. Apollo 14 uh, presently uh, 99,521 nautical miles away from Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 5,165 uh, feet per second. We would like to uh, repeat our All right, announcement. all right. Probably should be and descending Apollo soon anyway. Apollo 14 mission status news conference uh, will be held in the big auditorium of Building 1 uh, starting at 3 p.m. Uh, participants uh, will include uh, Mr. Rocco Patron, Apollo uh, Program Director, Colonel James uh, McDivitt, Apollo Spacecraft Program Manager at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Mr. Uh, Chet Lee, uh, Mission Director uh, for Apollo 14, and Mr. Sig Schulberg, the uh, Manned Spacecraft Center's uh, Director of Flight Operations. We're at uh, 23 hours, 43 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 24 hours, uh, 58 minutes, uh, now to the flight of Apollo 14. At uh, present, uh, we show Apollo 14 at uh, 103,220 nautical miles. I guess they'll be waking up close to when we land. Present velocity now reads uh, 5,012 feet per second. One of our clocks uh, continuing to count down uh, shows the uh, rest period uh, ending at uh, one hour, uh, one minute uh, from this time. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Oh, maybe earlier than I thought. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at uh, 25 hours, uh, 41 minutes, uh, now to the flight. <coughs> Apollo 14, now 105,282 nautical miles away from Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 4,929 uh, feet per second. The uh, present plan and mission control is, uh, is to not contact uh, the crew of Apollo 14 until 27 hours ground elapsed time, one hour later uh, than the uh, flight plan calls for. Uh, even uh, if the crew uh, should awaken uh, and uh, be about uh, and in contact with mission control uh, via voice communications. The uh, flight plan uh, will effectively, in, in, in certain uh, areas, move back by one hour. All of the activity is presently listed uh, 
in the uh, GETs uh, between 26 and 27 hours uh, uh, would move back uh, one hour. The uh, launch vehicle systems debriefing uh, would move back to uh, to start at uh, 28 hours at ground elapsed time. The uh, P-23 uh, cis-lunar navigation uh, star sightings uh, scheduled uh, in the flight plan uh, to start at 28 hours uh, 30 minutes uh, have been deleted. Uh, the purpose of this to uh, conserve on the uh, reaction control system uh, propellants. The uh, Delta V test and null bias check and the uh, P-52 uh, platform uh, alignments uh, have been delayed until uh, 29 hours and 10 minutes ground elapsed time. The uh, passive uh, thermal control exit uh, has been delayed until uh, 29 minutes or 29 hours uh, 45 minutes ground elapsed time. So uh, the crew will, in effect, have an extra hour of rest. <laughs> We're now at uh, 25 hours, uh, 40. Which is to say, they get more sleep or rest, yeah. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we're picking up conversation uh, with the crew at this point, and we'll switch to the, that conversation. That's okay. going too far down. Interesting terrain around here. Go ahead, Ed. Okay, uh, we've handed over and uh, I'm ready to copy here. Post late. Yes, it Apollo did that Control again. at uh, 26 hours uh, and 3 minutes. Uh, you, you heard that conversations with the, those conversations with the crew. Of the we're not so far. Alert. I think we can uh, go right ahead away. and descend. The uh, launch vehicle debriefing time will will not be changed. Uh, however, it uh, it appears likely that uh, other events Wrong in way. the flight plan uh, preceding that uh, may work very well. Uh, take place uh, at the leisure of the crew. We're at uh, 26 hours, four minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 14 at a Houston. Okay, Houston, I'm reach it now. Roger, I think we rotated between a couple antennas there. That's your line clear now. Uh, so my sleep, I slept for about four hours straight and then another two or three intermittently. That's feel very good. Roger. Houston, you're very, very weak. Uh, would you repeat? Uh, Roger, Al. Uh, for some reason, you're not nearly as readable as Ed is. Uh, and it sounds like... Uh, well, I guess I can't really say what the problem is there on, on your mic and getting a lot of uh, interference when you start and stop a transmission. 
You got no suggestion on what to do to improve it. Okay, how do you read this? Oh, that's a lot better, Al. Okay, the mic is It's not a lot better. <laughs> I object. Uh, I think we got it. Four to five hours good sleep, and then a little bit intermittent after that. Is that about it? Uh, Al, you're still uh, breaking up. Uh, I really can't give you a good description of what uh, is wrong, but uh, it's just not very readable. Okay, stand by. I'm having Houston. We'll work on it. Okay. And uh, Houston, I'll go ahead and uh, start charging bad A with your concurrence, and we have changed the Lyle canister. Uh, Roger, that's uh, affirmative. You can go ahead with that. and. Uh, also give us the uh, LAM CM Delta P as uh, shown at the 27 hours there when it's convenient. And uh, Gordon and Stu, are you? You're loud and clear, Stu. Okay, I guess on my sleep, I'll uh, split it with you about half. Uh, I'll say I got five hours. <laughs> Roger. My mattress was hard. <laughs> right. When you're ready to copy, I have some words on uh, some changes we figured out for the flight plan. Okay, you can go ahead with your change plan. Okay, uh, before we start, one reminder is that uh, uh, when you uh, went to sleep, we didn't get any uh, pre-sleep checklist. If there was anything uh, out of the ordinary there, we'll uh, please pre-sleep report that was. and. Uh, We'll take any uh, uh, standby. I'm getting some words from the surgeon here. Okay, just disregard it. Uh, just try to. Re we'll need the uh, both the pre and post sleep reports from here on out. Okay, on the flight plan if you're ready. Okay. Go ahead. Roger, uh, we're going to delay the launch vehicle systems debriefing until 28 hours. And uh, the P-23, which is scheduled at uh, 28.30, we're going to cancel, which will save us some RCS. On, uh, along that line, the uh, results of the last P-23 that Stu did, the horizon that uh, he shot at was 28 plus or minus 5 kilometers and uh, that's right on the pre-flight value so an update will not be required and your uh, average error for pointing error was three arc minutes which rank is right in there with the best ever recorded and, uh, best ever recorded the expert uh, gives you a pat on the back too and said it was an outstanding job. Ah, Joe, thank you, uh, Gordon. Okay, on with the flight plan. Uh, the Delta V test and no bias check. I think I'm a little bit and early the, here. Yeah. Uh, P-52, we're going to delay that till 2910 GEG.
affirmative, uh, Al. And, uh, and they still haven't fixed his comms. The uh, exit of PTC until 29.55. And when we uh, do exit PTC, uh, go right into the mid-course two pad attitude. Still carrying a fair bit of fuel. Roger, and all other activities will be nominal except uh, on the uh, wastewater dump we want you, we want you to dump to a uh, zero percent quantity. Okay, dump the wastewater to zero. Okay, we have one additional question for the uh, launch vehicle system. Seems a bit deserty. Well, there's some green back uh, there, though. We can either give it to you now so you can think about it or uh, wait until you get around to it to give it to you. Your choice. Many more clouds now. Okay, the question is, uh, you announced during the docking attempts that you thought the booster was maneuvering a little bit. They'd like you to expand on the direction of the maneuver, the type of maneuver, uh, lateral or oscillating, or any other words to that effect. The approximate time the maneuver was first observed, whether it was before the first docking attempt, between the first or second, or if you can relate it to any other activity. Any observed vents from the uh, launch vehicle during the maneuver. And anything else unusual or unexpected that you noticed. Over. Okay, question number 10. We'll drive the type direction and time relation to the booster maneuvers during docking and any events that we noticed during the Roger, and I was just thinking as I read it that on that time we can probably go back on a tape and find out when you mentioned it as far as tying down the time accurately. And that might be easier for us to get than you. Okay, that would probably help us, thank you. Hey, uh, that, that's no sweat, Gordon. I, I remember the, the comment when I made it and what the circumstances were. Okay, Stu. I think that takes care of all the words that got for you right at the moment. Okay, here's the 14. Go ahead, Ed. Our left C of Delta P is 0.3, and I'm standing by for a command module consumables update. Roger, Ed, copy 0.3. We don't have the figures on that update yet. One thing I didn't mention is that uh, we are planning to do mid-course two, as is shown in the uh, flight plan, and that uh, we'll do it such that it will require a uh, clock update as scheduled at uh, about 54 hours and 30 minutes in the timeline. Okay. It'll be a roughly 40-minute uh, clock. Looks like we can... Oh. Roughly a 40-minute... Uh, Thank you, Jordan. How much? It'll be roughly 40 minutes, uh, and I uh, still haven't got used to which direction it is. Actually, it's like uh, going into daylight saving time. It'll uh, move your clock ahead. <laughs> Great. Okay, Gordon. Looks like we get to uh, send that TFM uh, update uh, after us. Right. Follow control, Houston, uh, 26 hours, 15 minutes. The uh, mid-course correction, two is scheduled for a ground elapsed time of uh, 30 hours, uh, 36 minutes, 7 seconds. Uh, with a uh, delta V of 70... Clouds do make things better. Per second ...performed with the uh, service propulsion system engine. And uh, burn duration of 10 seconds. Uh, this will uh, force the trajectory to arrive at the moon uh, on time... Uh, time Greenwich Mean Time, thus requiring the uh, the uh, GMT uh, liftoff update. We're at uh, 26 
hours 16 minutes uh, continuing to monitor and we show uh, Apollo 14 at uh, 106,915 nautical miles away and traveling at a speed of 4,865 feet per second. Apollo 14, Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Ed, I that uh, consumables update now, if you're ready to copy. All right, go ahead. Roger, GET 2600. RCS total, 86. Quad A, 85. Quad Bravo, 86. Quad Charlie, 86. Quad Delta, 87. H2 Tank 1, 87.98%. H2 Tank 2, 85 decimal 7%. O2 Tank 1, Niner 3, decimal 4%. Tank 2, Niner 2.6%. Tank 3, 54, decimal 6%. Over. is correct, and uh, we have uh, had considerable discussion today about the docking probe. There are still uh, four questions uh, as a result of all these discussions that uh, we would like to put to you, the crew. It'll probably take some discussion to answer them. Uh, there's no hurries. Don't let us interrupt breakfast there. When you're ready, we'd like you to uh, take these questions and comment on them. Okay, Gordon, we'll probably be through here another 45 minutes and we'll jump on into that one then. Roger. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 26 hours, uh, 37 minutes, and now into the flight uh, of Apollo 14. We now show the uh, spacecraft at a distance of 107,892 nautical miles. Traveling now at a speed of uh, 4,827 feet per second. In approximately 20 minutes, uh, we will have a shift change uh, here in mission control. The uh, maroon shift uh, replacing uh, the orange uh, shift of uh, flight controllers. The uh, orange team, uh, headed by Pete Frank, uh, came on duty at about uh, 19 hours uh, uh, ground elapsed time until the uh, last hour uh, when uh, Mission Control, uh, in fact, received a call uh, from the crew. Mitchell, uh, Rusa, and uh, Commander Al Shepard uh, had spent uh, almost this entire time in uh, a rest period. In the uh, Mission Control Center, a flight plan update uh, was in progress uh, for a, a better period of the time. The, uh, the plan, uh, as it evolved, uh, did not uh, call for awakening the crew until uh, 27 hours uh, ground elapsed time, but uh, the crew uh, woke up almost uh, per flight plan schedule. Commander Al Shepard uh, reported uh, seven hours uh, deep and uh, in intermittent sleep, as did uh, Lunar Module Pilot Ed Mitchell. Uh, Stu Russo reported uh, some uh, five hours uh, sleep time. As uh, we look ahead to the next shift, uh, we uh, also look ahead to the mid-course two uh, 
a maneuver. And as uh, we had reported previously, that schedule for a ground elapsed time of uh, 30 hours, uh, uh, 36 minutes, uh, 7 seconds, uh, with a uh, delta V of 771.3 uh, feet per second and burn duration of 10 seconds. Uh, this uh, will require a, a GMT uh, liftoff update, uh, which effectively at uh, some future point uh, in the flight plan uh, will move the uh, GET clock here in mission control ahead about 40 minutes. Because of the uh, absence of uh, activity uh, with the crew uh, on this shift, uh, there is no plan uh, for a change of shift news conference. We're at uh, 26 hours, uh, 39 minutes into the flight. Uh, we show Apollo 14 at an altitude of uh, 108,012 nautical miles and a velocity of uh, 4,823 feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Honestly, seems like a pretty relaxed flight plan they've got there. In the omelet? Uh, That's news. Is Dateline, Cape Kennedy, Florida. Mrs. Louise Shepard sat in her motel room eating an omelet while her husband and the two other Apollo 14 astronauts worked with a bulky docking latch that for a time threatened their moon flight. <laughs> that was Ed Mitchell who responded, uh, she was sure calmer than we were. We're at uh, 26 hours, uh, 54 minutes into the flight, uh, Apollo 14 now 108,668 nautical miles away from Earth, uh, present velocity uh, 4,798 feet per second. Oh. This is Apollo Did I accidentally extend that little thing? We've or has it been out the whole time? I tried to use V flight to get the map. Windler. Of course, uh, that's at the flight, flight sim, not console. this. Uh, replacing flight director uh, Pete Frank. Our capsule communicator on this ship will be astronaut Bruce McCandless. And I think I might have accidentally uh, extended the uh, little room, tail bumper. And once that's extended at this speed, it's probably just uh, stuck. Overall mission status. Apollo 14 at this time is traveling at a velocity of 4,773 feet per second. And we've continued to watch that velocity drop off. Uh, the current spacecraft altitude is 109,301 nautical miles. Let's see now. Well, it's just uh, sort of straight in direction. One of the uh, principal items that this ship will be concerned with is mid-course correction two. Uh, a mid-course correction aimed at uh, targeting the arrival point of Apollo 14 at a pre-planned uh, ground elapsed for Greenwich Mean Time at an altitude of about 60 nautical miles above the surface uh, of the moon. The planned time of that uh, maneuver is at a ground elapse time of 30 hours, 36 minutes, 7 minutes. And the uh, uh, mid-course correction will change the perigee or the, high, the low point of uh, passage 
around the moon from 2100 nautical miles to the targeted 60 nautical mile altitude. Apollo 14, this is Houston, your friendly maroon team on station. Go ahead. Yeah, hello, Bruce. How are you doing today? Okay, Ed. How about yourselves? Great, thank you. Uh, Bruce, these questions that are being uh, posed on the probe operation, should I copy them or shall we just uh, let you go ahead and talk about them and we'll get back to you? Well, I think uh, probably the easiest thing to do would be um, Start going through them one at a time, and if you feel like you need uh, more time to uh, discuss it or to uh, recall the uh, exact things you went through, uh, we can just uh, take the time uh, as we go along. There's no no big rush on it. Uh, it'd probably be easier than you're trying to prepare a formal report or something and voice it down. Okay. And uh, we're just finishing up. We'll the, be, uh we're just finishing. It'll be a little while before we're ready to go that way. Okay, we're just finishing up the uh, change of shift briefing down here, and uh, probably be five or ten minutes uh, at least before we're ready to roll on it too. That's good. Hey Bruce, did you get a good night's sleep? You put in a hard day uh, yesterday. Yeah, I got up about uh, 1:30 or 2 o'clock this afternoon. Felt real good. Right. We're happy to discover there really is a patch after all. We're constantly reminded of it. That there really is a what after all? There really is a patch. Yeah, how about that? That's a beautiful one. Wow, that's dramatic. Hey, that's Bruce, the air brakes. Pass on to uh, Ray that it was not 100% at the bench check. That's uh, to Ray that it was not 100% at the bench check. You mean the. Uh, the equipment, the equipment loaded on board was not completely represented at the bench check. That's affirmative. Now we've got uh, the backup crew. I don't know why, but we've got the backup crew commander standing here uh, monitoring the system. We seem to be finding a few things around that uh, we didn't see at our bench check, uh, and a few crew preference decals. Yeah, how was breakfast, by the way? Great. Hey, it sure was. Yeah, and, uh, I found my headset all right this morning too, but there was a little uh, difference from last night. Okay, you, you keep us posted on that headset. Apollo 14, this is Houston. Go ahead, over. I wish to any by for the booster launch base discussion and the probe discussion anytime you're ready to go. Roger. Yep. This is Apollo Control at 27 hours, 44 minutes. Uh, you heard Al Shepard uh, ask, ask the Capcom, uh, whether or not we're ready to proceed with the uh, continuing analysis of the probe. Super and dramatic air brakes. To proceed with that uh, analysis. Uh, last evening on this shift, a series of 12 questions were forwarded to the crew after removing the probe uh, in a preliminary analysis. Uh, we'll be picking up where those 12 questions left off with a series of additional questions and with additional uh, Apollo program and uh, NASA management officials uh, here in the control center uh, to uh, participate in the evaluation. Okay. Go ahead, 14. Hey, Bruce, uh, how far away is this 4B from uh, uh Stand by. I'll see if I can get you a figure on that. Yeah, and on the same... Uh, uh, subject, have you got any, uh, they, uh, give us a roll angle during... Well, I think it's safe to say that uh, we're going to go around first. Uh, 
Which is fine, we'll take a look at the city, how it looks like okay, in x 11, but I want to get below the clouds here. Uh, among the interested officials uh, here in the control center at the proper time, uh, at the present time, who will be uh, participating in this probe evaluation are uh, Apollo Program Director Rocco Patron, uh, Donald K. Slayton, Director of Flight Crew Operations at the Manned Spacecraft Center, Sig Schoberg, Director of Flight Operations at MSC, and Apollo 14 Backup Commander, Eugene Cernan, also astronaut uh, Tom Stafford. So, Fortaleza, uh, Brazil. Uh, walked into the control center and is at the Capcom console at this time. This is Apollo Control at 27 hours, 48 minutes. Apollo 14 now traveling at a velocity of 4,704 feet per second. And we show the spacecraft 111,159 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, in addition to those officials uh, here on the floor of the control center, we also have uh, uh, Dr. George Lowe, acting NASA administrator in the viewing room. And uh, Charles Matthews. Well, there's the, the airport. Administrator for manned space flight, uh, eh, it could have made Dr. it if I pushed it, the, but uh, probably should not push it. Room. have a series of four planned questions which will be asked the crew uh, in addition to follow-up questions I'm sure that uh, their responses will uh, elicit. Dean, this is Houston. Up oh, the oh, haze yeah. going on here. Oh, Roger, we'd like to pick up the discussion on the docking probe situation now if uh, you're ready. Oh no, by, uh, clouds. Ruining all our fun. I'm still going down, so they're just trying to deliberately cause us problems. Okay, uh, Bruce, I guess we're all uh, hooked up and ready to go. <laughs> 14, this is Houston, go ahead. Roger, I think uh, we're all uh, hooked up and uh, ready to go. All right, your uh, guess number one question. Well, I guess that's uh, downtown Fort Lays over there. Was there ever more than one bottle selected uh, on the docking probe, and if so, uh, which ones? Uh, that's negative. It was the only one we used. All right, very good. Uh, how many times? was the uh, extend release position of the uh, docking probe extension retraction switch operated and uh, for when and about how long was it uh, held in these positions over? Well, it was operated for a flight plan. The initial very much deliberately flying low here. Do not panic. Okay, so uh, grand total, I guess we could say that uh, you've had uh, three cycles to the extend release position. The not exactly. The greatest buildings ever, but at least there's something. Oops. Roger, we copy. And Bruce, no response at all, uh, except for the first one, uh, which uh, went normally. Okay, and on the first one there, you were actually uh, causing the probe to extend, were you not? That's affirmative. We extended it, and as uh, Al said, we heard her uh, plunk in, and uh, the talkbacks did their thing, uh, flashed barber pole, and then went to gray, uh, as advertised. Okay, then on the subsequent ones, about all we'd be uh, uh, operating is the capture latch cocking motor. Okay, 
Okay. So you probably wouldn't feel that in the form of a mechanical shock. Okay, right there, how so. irritated is it with me? And, well, uh, Copa's right, constantly okay, saying 1,000, I'm sure. next one around uh, before you answer us on it. Make sure you got all the details lined up. We'd like you to go through the procedure uh, in as much detail as you can on the final docking, including the switch positions, talkback indications, uh, the dynamics, uh, the order of your contact with the... <coughs> With the lem drogue, the plus X thrusting, the barber poles, uh, the bottle selection, and the actual probe retraction. Uh, I think you mentioned Let's yesterday get you had a three second the gear going delay down? in probe retraction, and uh, we'd like to know when that three second delay was measured starting, that is, uh, from throwing the switch or from some other. Oh, the serious drag. I think I better go back into the cockpit here. Okay, uh, I'll start off by seeing. And of course, those are one of the first things we verify that uh, when the problem occurred, uh, and your suggestion as well as our own. And so everything was normal up to the point where uh, Stu made his first contact. Now I'll let him take it on in from there. Okay, Bruce, why don't we just back up a little bit? And uh, you, you asked for the specific one where we got the, uh, the docking, but. Uh, Let's go back to the first one, and uh, everything looked uh, just real fine coming in on it. I'd, I'd say uh, the the whole docking operation was just so much like the CMS that it was hard to believe. I mean, the, uh, the procedures and the view and the response uh, of the vehicle, and I'd say I had uh, two-tenths of a foot per second uh, closing speed. And then... Uh, the reaction when I hit the drogue was just exactly like the, uh, you know, the docking trainer that, that we had where uh, you didn't hit the capture latches, but you just went in and uh, banged into the uh, drogue. Roger, the one over there in building five. Well, that's, yeah, that's the exact uh, uh, response I got. Where the heck the is it? One, I, uh, I clunked into it. Oh, and, pointed at it. You know, Maybe I'm just too I low. I could tell that I was uh, slipping out, and, of course, uh, Al didn't call the barber pole, so at that time I did the natural thing and uh, jabbed it with a little plus X and drove it into the okay I see the drogue and very hazy we were right now up good uh, on holding plus X and the uh, the alignment you know still good on the uh, on the target just like uh, you know you can do in that in the docking trainer okay and then uh, I realized that it hadn't made contact so I let her back off. At that time, we called you, and I said, well, I'll try it again and uh, increase the velocity. And on this one, I'm estimating that my contact velocity was about a foot per second. Now, it might have been a little less than that. As you know, uh, a foot per second closing looks like you're going to run right through the thing. So, uh, but I would, uh, I've looked at a lot of these in the simulator, and I'd say that probably the second one was uh, right at a foot per second and uh, got the uh, got the same response and I really can't remember whether that's the one where you told me to uh, try uh, plus X after I hit or not uh, you know I had already done that on the first one but uh, anyway if this was the one then I hit uh, he said hold three seconds I held four and uh, no, no luck at all we came back out at that time I suggested we fall back, regroup, and talk about it, and uh, then y'all pretty much oh, the story then, you should that was that we not on glide slope, apparently. With uh, everything normal, and uh, I guess the second time there was uh, I uh, contacted, and I, that was not the time I held the uh, plus X, it was the next one on your suggestion. Yeah, the second one, uh, I, I did it on my own, and then you... On the third one, you said, let's try normal docking and hold uh, three seconds. I did that and held four. And also, uh, it was after the second docking that I noticed the radio scratches. And, oh, no, no, and keep going, keep going. Time, uh, that's keep going. No, it's fine. From the action and then seeing the scratches that the docking Am I still on reverse? Uh, were not giving and uh, were indeed locked instead of the cock position. Okay, so we went through that one uh, 
as you suggested, uh, and I held oh, okay. plus that was, four seconds. And, uh, the brakes don't work the same the, as in right in Flight Sim. And then we came out and then down to the uh, to the last time. Uh, two. I came in, I'd say probably about a. Uh, okay, a little bit dodgy uh, right at the end there. Point one five uh, in that area, two tenths, maybe a little less. Uh, contacted it and uh, at contact the, uh, the attitude stayed fairly good uh, there was maybe a degree and a half two degree uh, pitch up movement on the uh, coaz i then applied the plus x and held it at that time i put it in the center of the drug and the uh, coaz and the reticle and the translation were all just looking real good and uh, so Whoop. i sudden light there uh, gave the cue to Al to retract and he hit the retract switch at that point I'm gonna pause that right there mill hmm well I'm not mill but I'll take it anyway Maybe that doesn't mean... Well, it pretty looks somewhat military. <laughs> um, is it going to go forward? Are those F4s over there? I think I've taken a military turn here. Whoops. Well... I'm just going to park it over here. And they're gonna have to deal with me. Alright, we have arrived at Fortaleza. More detail at the airport than I thought there would be. Even F4 is apparently. That was a surprise. But alright. Uh, so with this. Uh, of course, next time we will be back in Flight Sim 2020, and I'll be flying an Alpha Jet, a freeware Alpha Jet. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.